you know, when you talk about, when you talk about like a uh, tragedy turning to comedy, there is a fine line you want to walk that people need to know, first of all, you're okay with it. And the second, they need to have this common understanding that this is no longer a tragedy. But I think different cultures like Chinese and American have a different bars for where tragedy is, right? Uh, I'll give you a real example. Um, one of the bits I'm still like polishing is um, my grandma cooked my pet bunny as my 10 year old birthday present. So a lot of the Chinese people found it funny because yeah. uh, they have they have a similar experience. They know their grandparents see their pets as food, right? Because we grew up at this time that like, I'm like the first generation we see animal uh, as pet. <laughs> right? But I still get it from the farmer's market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got my pet bunny from farmer's market. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that, that story itself is very, um, like, uh, sometimes Americans get it. French people love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, why is that? <laughs> because they eat, they eat bunnies. They eat, rab oh. they, they eat rabbit. So yeah. French people get a joke and they laugh at it. But Americans is oh, like, and it's like they feel super messed up um but then the true story is also like <laughs> like the the bunny was so i had a, a four in total and the three of them are died from they're getting sick and i have one large one like left and then and then she was fine so my my grandma was like we gotta eat her before she dies <laughs> And, and then the thing is, I came home from school, and she's like, oh, it's a surprise. Try it. <laughs> and so it's like, then you'll guess. And, and I ate it, right? And I ate it. So, how how chi? Wow. <laughs> and after that, and she said, oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's your bunny. Like, I was... <laughs> I was crying. Oh my God. Uh, I'm crying from laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but now, you know, like, I got over it. Like, you know, the thing is, like, of all past goals, bunnies, <laughs> I never, I tried so hard, but we never had an emotional connection. That bunny didn't connect with me at the time, which is sad. Um, on the other hand, I would try to, like, uh, on my jokes, I feel like the part made it okay to the American audience is, like, look, when your pets get sick, right? Like, your pets are about to die. You, you spend thousands of dollars and go to the vet, have to murder your pet. <laughs> you hire somebody to murder your pet. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah, I never thought of that. Right? Yeah, so yeah. I think that's where I'm trying to find an angle. It's like, okay, okay, look, you, you think we're a crew, you think we're a bad, you spend money to kill your pet. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, if anything... I am more spiritually bonded with my bunny. Yes, because it's, yeah, you re, you're reunited in your stomach. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I have a very similar story with my six-year-old. My little chicken was cooked when I oh. turned six. But it wasn't because I was getting into a uh, boarding school. Uh -huh. And growing up, I've always wanted pets from my parents and because we lived in a very small apartment. So my parents were like, no, you can't. We have no room for pets. So finally, I was able to get a little chicken oh. from the farmer's market. Again, so yeah. the morning market. Yeah. And that was like my little pet because I treated it like a dog, right? It's like, you know, like my little puppy. Yes, and then it yes. obviously grew bigger and bigger. And it, it is becoming a little hard because you're not meant to keep chicken in apartments. <laughs> So, um, yeah, and then when I turned six and I was going to go into a boarding school, so my uncle back then, he's a really good chef. So he came over, we had a family dinner, uh, lunch at my house, and that was when they decided that we're going to have chicken for lunch. <laughs> and that is the chicken. <laughs> and, and I was just crying so bad. But the funny part that I always remember was my cousin came over. And my cousin had, I don't think she has even met my chicken but she was crying with me. I mean, she was even sadder than I was. So we were in the other room crying. I don't know why she's crying, but we're in the other room crying. And then they're enjoying their lunch in the other living room. And I just remembered, yeah, she smelled really good, but I was just 
too busy crying and I just couldn't get over it. <laughs> I know it's like I can totally read because I was crying so hard. But the thing is, I ate it, and I, oh yeah, that's even worse. I, it's like I also, I also acknowledge like how good it tastes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so hilarious! <laughs> I'm glad you find it funny. Like, no, it's not always the case. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't even know how to um, describe that. And I think maybe is what you said. You know, you kind of move on from that trauma or that experience, and you look back at it with a different perspective. And I also, I think it's maybe now, like as we look back, we we put ourselves in our parents' shoes, and then and that's maybe that's why we're getting another um, perspective out of that yeah. traumatizing yeah, then, experience. <laughs> Ultimately, what I understand is like you know, my grandma, she grew up at a time when all her siblings died from starvation, right? And then like, or like, there, she had the time that like I have to hide in the basement when um, the Japanese like were invading China. So like, she lived a very hard life. For her, is like never waste the food. Never. Yes. <laughs> she raised her own chicken. She took very good care of a chicken. But that from day one is food. <laughs> yeah. So to me, yeah. it's more about like I understand where she come from, and you know, like she did this not to traumatize me. She did this from a place of love. Yeah, yeah, so, and I think it's yeah, it's so beautiful the you know the way you you said it, and I feel like. You know, deep down, that's something that I feel that Chinese diasporas, and maybe not just Chinese diasporas, right? But I feel like people around the world that have experienced different cultures. I think we can really, rather than talking about how we're torn between the culture, we're conflicted between culture, which are rightly, you know, the uh, the real experiences that we 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 did go through and we're still going through. But I feel like the the ability to immerse yourself into it really gives you a great sense of empathy, which I think is very much needed. And I and I feel like I really hope through these stories, um, conversations like the conversation that I'm having with you, we can we can really harness that experience and use it for something that's positive, right? Because we yeah. are the world. It is becoming more divided. It is more polarizing. And I think we need more people to be out there bridging cultures and helping others find that understanding, um, helping them see things from different perspectives. And quite honestly, at the end of the day, that's what makes the world beautiful. I mean, imagine everybody think and talks the same way. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you for joining us in this journey to build a global Chinese diaspora community, one conversation at a time. Please remember to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your friends, and you can also follow us on Instagram at Culture Gen. That's where we post daily Chinese artistic and cultural content to inspire our modern living. We'll see you in the next episode. Take care.